Alrighty, so some of you guys have been asking. Alrighty guys, some of you have been asking about the wiring for the Ranger. So, see if I can't explain this to the best of my abilities for you guys. Sit down my drink. Without the girl, I can still reach in here and pop the hood. But once I have a grill, then it should be all good. I have to set this stuff down so I can prop the dang hood up. I think that one through much. Alrighty, so. I have the factory ECU still. And all the wires. Let me get this thing off my dang wrist. It's complicated and filming with a GoPro on my phone to see which one's a better resolution and come out. Alright, so factory ECU. Still there. I got the um, the engine harness and went through that. The only wires that I kept out of it were for the um, oil pressure gauge on the gauge cluster and the coolant temperature gauge sensor wire excuse me the <clears throat> excuse me the oil pressure gauge um, whenever the factory engine has sufficient oil pressure it just grounds the sensor so I have it going right over here to my ground right there so whenever the key is on then it gets grounded out so then that works um, but I believe that I messed up the cluster whenever I took it apart and was messing around with it so I'm gonna put the factory in back in and see if it works like it should but it was working perfectly fine prior the coolant temperature wire um, that one I'm going to try to find a resistor that's a correct resistance for the gauge to read normal because I have aftermarket sensors. I have this sensor right here. Let me zoom in on my phone. That goes in the factory spot for coolant temperature. And then I have the Benz Force oil pressure sensor adapter going right there so I have oil pressure coolant temp then over here this is just temporary right now until I build a cap to go on that but I have feeding the turbo I have the oil temperature so I can make sure that oil and coolant are both good. And then, so yeah, I went over the wires going to the engine harness. The entire engine bay harness, I went through and stripped out every single wire. I'll look through my pictures and upload a picture of me in the process of that right here. And then the um, engine bay harness, I went through that and stripped out everything besides the wires to the alternator which go over here to the LS alternator plug which I still need to notch the frame out for that so it has the sense wire I have the RPM signal wire off the alternator and I have the 12 volt signal with the I believe it's 420 ohm half in or half watt resistance resistor going to that to make the LS alternator work and not burn up and I forget what the other wire was for I have to look at my schematics and I can put that in here too and then I have my headlight wires obviously I still have the AC plug just in case I need anything over here with the 
a bigger wire per se I guess but yeah AC is deleted or the blower itself the entire housing is deleted so off the the engine bay harness is just headlights running light turn signal horn and the starter wire which goes to right here this is just a brand new um, starter solenoid then I have my main power going to the battery and then the other power wire goes to this um, it's a 904194 Dorman part number it's a 73 glow plug um, solenoid and then you just have your power in on the left side power out to the um, glow plugs on the right ground on the bottom and power on the top in this orientation that's why I have to jump it out still because I don't have um, a signal wire going to a timer because I believe it runs for like 15 seconds whenever you're going to turn the engine on um, this is my new co-line fuel line made in Germany it's still got a little leak I don't know if you can see it in here or not yeah we got fuel up to there then it's all bubble which I need to cut that fuel line down and make it go straight up because it still doesn't start it's still got too much air in the system I'm gonna change this big fuel filter and this little fuel filter you can see it through here I've already changed but I don't know what the heck is happening I don't know if somebody's playing tricks on me or what but the line was completely clogged I blew it out and then a bunch of dirt came through and then I blew it out again and then it got flow but that looks like a plan almost so I don't know what is happening with my fuel so yeah I think that really explains everything for the wiring the only wire I'm really using for the engine itself is literally just to start it the glow plug wiring on the fan I didn't realize I was zoomed in so much the glow plug wiring I got these big wires right here and then they all feed back to this terminal right here yeah terminal right there on the left they're all soldered in they all have heat shrink so then still haven't done anything with the fuel sitting in it either this one still has one in there but I don't know what resistance it is and there's also no float so there's not really a reason in my mind to even mess with it I still gotta fix the unlock on the driver door come around here so gotta put the taillight in too so got numerous things to do on this thing climb up in here still gotta reset my speedometer but you know you see the oil pressure doesn't work the battery voltage shows a little low but I think that's because I have a bad ground yeah this thing's freaking really dead but up here we got our boost which has a signal wire or sorry signal hose going straight to um, the back of the intake manifold this next one is exhaust temperature which goes in on the bottom of the exhaust manifold the next one's water temperature oil temperature oil pressure and volts um, so yeah really I mean as far as a, a wiring explanation on what all I did on this was just stripped out every single wire I knew I didn't need like for the AC 
stuff like that. If I could go back and do it again, I would leave the two wires that go to the master cylinder and then jump those out together with the little jumper and the like main plug itself just to make the light go off, but I can always take the bulb out. But yeah, it's just grounds and power and then the start wire right there. Um, you can use this, all the overboost protection solenoid. And then that goes to this vacuum right here. Just kind of ghetto for now, but let's see if I can get it. It's on there enough to get the idea. So straight from the vacuum pump, comes along, goes to a T. This continues along to the booster. This one goes in there so that when it gets power with the key on, it doesn't allow vacuum to cross through. So when you shut the key off, it loses power, then allows the vacuum that's built up in the line to round down here to the back of the injection pump, which is right there. And then that cuts fuel instantly to the engine. So that's why whenever I had a bad vacuum leak in the other videos, it wouldn't actually shut off right away with the key. I'd have to rev it up a little bit to build up the vacuum. And then it would actually shut off. Um, this is the throttle bracket. I can explain and show you guys too. That works perfect with the geometry. It gets super close, but still works. So that's wide open throttle. And if you still want to shut it off, you still can by pushing this. So yeah, I mean, realistically this thing can run in anything if you have a starter, fuel, and glow plugs, and not a ton of air in the system. And this is the um, Mercedes diesel 4x4 adapter plate to forward small block transmissions. And then I had my big old starter down there, which doesn't give me any issues at all so far, at least. Um, yeah, and I do have the protective coating on it to go up to here to get away from the heat. Still got to do something with this big old heater hose that runs around. Thinking about putting a splice in the middle and then having a 1 8 um, plug in it. Or like maybe coolant temperature or just a bleeder valve port and I'm not really sure sorry to get my fingers in there if I can get the yeah there it is AGT probe and then yeah my new spectra hot air intake so yeah try to keep the videos coming on this thing I didn't do a, a video of the fuel line just because it didn't take me a little that long and I tried to get it done and get this thing fired back up which didn't because I still have a little leak but I'm gonna replace all these little aluminum washers and try to get this thing fired up shortly for you guys and keep the videos coming so stay tuned